This is Phil Chandler back at the Flow Hive again. It's the 4th of February 2020 and we are now going to um, adjust the arrangement of boxes because what we've got here is the flow box itself down at the bottom. We put it there because what we wanted the bees to do is to take the honey from it and store it in their brood box or in this super. As it happens, they've uh, whatever they store, they've probably mostly eaten now. So the flow frames in this bottom box are now empty, near as damn it, we think, and so it's time to rearrange the boxes. It's too early for bees to be storing honey, so there's no point yet in putting this box on top of the brood box. Um, so we're going to leave it as it is with the, um, the queen excluders in here, which stops the queen going downstairs and laying in the flow frames. Um, we've got two flow frames here which we took out which we're now going to put back and this will allow the bees to, um, if they do start collecting pollen and honey, they can start storing it in the flow frames but um, mainly this is a temporary arrangement for the next few weeks until things warm up and they start storing stuff. So, right, let's do it. There's a little... Um, plastic tub on top here which acts as a, 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 a top feeder cover and also um, enables us to see the fact that there are bees right there. So the bees are right up, up high in this hive. This is, um, this is a Langstroth box, sorry this is a, um, is that a 7 or an 8 frame? It's a wide Langstroth box which I put onto this narrow one because I didn't have anything else to do with me at the time. So it's a bit of a kind of cack handed arrangement. Anyway, it'll do for now. Oh. Okay, so there's there's literally nothing in here. These are all empty frames now, which means that they've either eaten the honey that was in here or they've moved it all upstairs, which I, I, I suspect is the case. We've got a good little crop of um, wood lice and I was going to say earwigs, but I haven't actually seen any earwigs yet. Wood lice. Which I'm perfectly happy about because they are the sorts of things that bees will cohabit with in the wild. And um, earwigs are everywhere, anyway. Just noticed that one of the little plastic plugs is missing. Which is another example of my clumsiness, as people have been at pains to point out in the feedback to the last video. But, okay. There's a certain amount of um, wax filled up on the top of these, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. I'll scrape most of it off anyway. There's no bees living in this bottom box at all. They're all huddled up together in the uh, brood box, which I'm going to put back on. Quick scrape. Oops. So, um, something I should say in answer to some of the uh, critical comments that we received on the last video, which are fair enough. You know, I, I, I didn't. I don't claim to be perfect, um, and I do make mistakes. And the the one mistake I certainly made was to leave off the metal strap, whatever you call it, that is supposed to hold the back of the bottom edges of the flow box together. And um, yeah, sure, I did leave that off and that should not have affected the, 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 the use of the box at all. So um, the point, the real point I was trying to make in that last video was that in, in the conditions that we experience in this country, I'm not convinced that the flow hive is, uh, is particularly useful compared to other hives, um, mainly because we do have 
at least two crops, uh, namely um, oilseed rape and ivy in particular. Uh, we actually don't get oilseed rape very much in this particular location, but certainly we get loads of ivy. Um, ivy honey sets like rock, and if it sets in the frame, in a flow frame, then you're never going to get it out again. You just have to let the bees do it. So that was really the main issue I was trying to address. But people got the impression, I think, that I was anti-flow hive. I'm not anti-flow hive at all. I think in certain conditions, mainly probably warmer places, um, which have strong flows, long strong flows, I think the flow hive is probably perfectly viable hive. Um, so I'm not inherently anti it at all. Um, I have reservations about some of its, uh, some of the, its design features, um, but you know, I think in the right conditions it can probably work very well, and that's borne out by you know, the number of people that do use it um, worldwide. So you know, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm anti-flow. What I'm saying is that um, given the conditions that we live in here, um, which is you know for six, six months of the year. Um, we consider it to be beekeeping weather and the other six months we just basically don't. Um, but we, you know, the main thing is, is that the, uh, the, the, the two crops that cause the problem is the oilseed rape and the ivy. And in many places in this country there are plenty of both. And if you get um, a rapidly crystallising nectar, or ra rapidly crystallising honey I suppose you should call it by that time, um, in your flow frames, then it's going to be the very devil to get out again. In fact, you're not going to get it. The bees will have to do it. Uh, I suppose the other way you could do it is by melting it out by hot water or something. But then you've got like water and honey mix, which isn't a great thing. Except for mead, of course. If you're going to make mead, great, no problem. Um, so that, that was my main point. Um, so we're going to give this another go this year. We're going to come back in a few weeks' time when it warms up, hopefully, and we're going to put the flow box back on the top, which is where it should be, probably get rid of this, um, this mis-sized super, and uh, we'll see how it does this year. And hopefully we'll get a different result. Who knows? Okay, that's it for now.